All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to solve a very interesting limit, namely the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial to the 1 over n over n. Now this limit I found in an analysis textbook, and in fact I would like to show you how one can use analysis to study limits. Now, before starting this problem, let's actually study a slightly easier problem, which will turn out to help us solve the original one. Namely, let's first try to find the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial to the 1 over n. And notice this is precisely of the form Sn to the 1 over n, where Sn is the sequence n factorial. Now, this nth root of a sequence should remind you of the root test. And in fact, there's an inequality that's very useful here that will help us solve this problem. And this is what I like to call the pre-ratio test, which simply says the following. If you take the worst possible limit of this nth root, namely if you take the limit as n goes to infinity, of the nth root of Sn, it's still better than taking the lim inf of the ratio term. So this is greater or equal to the lim inf as n goes to infinity of the ratio of successive terms. So Sn plus 1 over Sn. Which raises the question, what is this term? Well, since Sn is just n factorial, let's calculate this. So Sn plus 1 over Sn, that becomes now n plus 1 factorial over n factorial, but this just simplifies to be n plus 1. So in particular, this term here just becomes n plus 1, and so we're just taking the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1, but this just goes to infinity. So what are we saying? We're saying that this nth root, the lowest possible limit, it's still bigger than something that goes to infinity. So in particular, since this is infinity, this is greater or equal to infinity, which actually forces this sequence to go to infinity. So to summarize, in the end, we get that this limit of this sequence is just infinity. In other words, the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial to the 1 over n, that becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of Sn to the 1 over n, and which is bigger than the lim inf, which goes to infinity. So this is actually equal to infinity. And now, since this sequence goes to infinity, you may say, OK, what if we divide it by n? And so now let's go back to our original problem. Let's try to find the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial to the 1 over n divided by n. Now, in the previous problem, it was useful to write this in terms of an nth root. So in fact, let's do this again. So again, let's write this as an nth root. So notice this just becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of n factorial over n to the n to the 1 over n, which suggests to let Sn be this term, n factorial over n to the n. So Sn is n factorial over n to the n, which means that this thing just becomes the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of Sn. All right, now, in the previous example, the pre-ratio test was useful, so let's use it again, but this time the full version, which is a bit longer, but here's some magic. So here is a full version of the pre-ratio test, which simply says that the limits of the root terms are squeezed between the limits of the ratio terms. And ironically, this actually shows that the root test is better than the ratio test, 
because if the ratio test converges, then the root test converges which means that sometimes the root test can converge even if the ratio test is inconclusive. And well, again, that's not the point of today. The point is to evaluate this sequence, so the limit of this whole sequence. And in particular, let's calculate the ratio of Sn plus 1 over Sn. And I'll do this on a different whiteboard. So again, here's a sequence, Sn is n factorial over n to the n. So now let's calculate the ratio term. So let's do Sn plus 1 over Sn. What this becomes, this is n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 over n factorial over n to the n. And then if you flip the denominator, what you get is that this equal, equals to uh, n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 to the n plus 1 times n to the n over n factorial. And that's the same thing as n plus 1 factorial over n factorial times n to the n over n plus 1 to the n plus 1. But now we have a bunch of nice simplifications uh, because n plus 1 factorial over n factorial, that's the same thing as n plus 1, which cancels out with this plus 1 here. So what we're left with is simply n to the n over n plus 1 to the n, which is the same thing as n over n plus 1 to the n. And if you divide by n on numerator and the denominator, this is the same thing as 1 over 1 plus 1 over n to the n. And that becomes 1 over n over this thing to the n. So 1 over 1 plus 1 over n to the n. Now, as n goes to infinity, this limit exists. And if you remember some of the facts from calculus, this actually goes to 1 over e, which is probably your expression of joy right now, 1 over e. OK, so just to recap, we calculated the ratio terms. We found that this goes to 1 over e. But what about our original problem? So now let's go back to our previous whiteboard. Remember, we had the pre-ratio test. Now, the nice thing is we can apply the pre-ratio test to this inequality because what did we find? We found that the whole limit of the ratio terms goes to 1 over e. So in particular, the lim inf and the lim sup go to that same number. So this goes to 1 over e and this goes to 1 over e. Because lim inf and lim sup, it's only different if the limit doesn't exist. Now, what do we find? We find that the lim inf and the lim sup, they're squeezed between the same numbers, 1 over e and 1 over e. So in particular, we can conclude that this inequality is just an equality. because they have no space to be different. And therefore, what we can conclude is that the lim inf of this equals to the lim sup of this. And by the lim sup squeeze theorem, we actually conclude that the limit of this exists, and it equals to this number. So summa summarum, so in the end, we get that this limit, which is the limit of the root terms, is just 1 over e. Okay. So isn't that elegant? I think it's beautiful and a nice uh, unforeseen application of the pre-ratio test. And 
Before I conclude, I would like to mention, because I'm sure we'd get comments like that, yes, you could also do this using Sterling's formula. So for a second, let's put my applied math hat on and show you the solution with Sterling's formula. Because what does Sterling's formula say? It says as n goes to infinity, n factorial is roughly equal to the following so asymptotically goes to, um, let's see, the square root of 2 pi n, so 2 pi to the 1 half times n to the 1 half. And again, there's a reason why I write it like that. And then n over e to the n. So in particular, for our first limit, if you take this to the 1 over nth power, this becomes 1 over 2 pi to the 1 half to the 1 over n, so 1 over 2n, times n to the 1 over 2n, and here again to the 1 over nth power. So this cancels out. So as n goes to infinity, this is a number to the you know, 1 over n, and you know, a number to the 1 over n basically goes to 1. So as n goes to infinity, this goes to 1. And then this becomes n to the 1 over n to the 1 half. But n to the 1 over n, this is a limit I've shown before. It goes to 1. But then we're left with n over e, but n over e that goes to infinity. So therefore, our first limit had to go to infinity, which we've shown. But in particular, now you see why we had to divide by n, because it turns out if you divide this by n, you do get a finite number. And in fact, let's do that. In our second limit, we divide it by n, which divides this by n, which makes this bad term cancel out. And therefore, we get this goes to 1, this goes to 1, and this goes to 1 over e. But and therefore, in the end, that limit is 1 over e. I mean, it works, but it's not as elegant. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.